Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the Speak and Grow Rich podcast with your hostess with the most is Amanda Moxley. And today I have the beautiful Regina Gilbinas with me. Hello. Welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Hi. So Regina, after spending 17 years as a corporate turnaround specialist and guiding over 100 corporations, that's a lot, back to financial profitability. I mean, that's the whole point here. We're trying to get profitable. She expanded her business into the online space, and she now also works with online female entrepreneurs, guiding them to unapologetically step into their original blueprint activate their brilliance, and in turn, blow up their income. Who doesn't want that? Her clients do not pay her for her time. Nope, definitely don't do that. They pay her for 20 years of experience helping businesses generate millions of dollars. She is a business strategist, and she's here to share with us the good. So get your pen and paper, and let's go. So Regina, welcome. Tell us how, how can we blow up our business and our brilliance? Oh my God. Let's just dive right into it, shall we? Yeah. Okay. So there is so many moving parts about this. And, you know, like if I tap into the experience of the last 20 years, like reorganization, for example, like what kept people from scaling fast? And there was two main things. And it's always been the same thing across the board. It doesn't matter if it's the offline big corporations that I work with or the online entrepreneur, like if it's a one man, one woman show, it's always the same thing. Number one, the needs of your company will out, will always outgrow your knowledge bank because mm-hmm. you only know what you know. So like if you know this much and you're, so before the company gets to, before the company maximizes your knowledge base and it, you're okay. But the moment the needs of the company begin to exceed your knowledge and what you actually know, you now begin to operate your company from a deficit of information. Mm-hmm. We can't make profitable decisions to continue scaling the company if we're missing big components of actually what's needed to continue growing. So the moment your company yeah. outgrows your knowledge base, the company is going to scale for a little bit beyond what you know, and then you're going to lose profitability. And this is mm-hmm. where people begin to slide backwards and really, really, really quickly because they're trying to create something without all of the information and right. that never works out. So your the needs of your company whatever it is it's a one person company or a hundred people company you need you're always going to need more information so know where your information stops and when it's time to bring somebody else in and the other part is lack of infrastructure Mm -hmm. okay always always hurts companies we cannot grow if we're trying to build things on thin ice you need a solid infrastructure now i'm not saying you need a solid infrastructure you need 25 people working with you or helping you or like you sub things out to them, but an infrastructure is necessary in order to sustain the growth of the company. So the two biggest reasons I've seen people stop growing or actually outgrow what they know and then hurt themselves, go backwards in their scaling, because we can scale positive and we can also grow negative as well in your business, is your knowledge base, your company's needs outgrow your knowledge base. And number two is lack of infrastructure in the business. So those two things, I believe, are the main components to a profitable, successful business. And then there is a lot of uh, a lot of other things that go into it, of course. I agree. The cost of not knowing. You pay life the cost of not knowing. If you have the ability to make a million dollars and you only made 100000 night you owe life 900000 for not knowing. So that lack of, lack of knowledge, how do you help people identify what skills or knowledge they need next so they can stay profitable and ahead of their business? You know, it's very easy to look at their financial statement and see how they're making their decisions. The numbers always tell a story. You can mm-hmm. look at anybody's bank account and you can look at their financial statements, their PNL, their balance sheet, and really know how they're making their decisions. It's, right, it's so really- marketing, sales, advertising, team. Team, marketing, sales, advertising, because listen, it all comes from the top, right? The, the fi- Whoever makes the final decision, that's typically the CEO. Even if they have an infrastructure, who makes the final decision? So if you look at their financial statements, you can literally see, yes, how are they applying the resources? Do they have enough people? Do they have too many people? Are they maximizing the, the skills of, 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 of every single individual? Do they have the right people in the right places? Sometimes we have the right people in the wrong places. And then that actually ends up costing productivity and profitability. So there's so many things. But if you look at somebody's financial statement and just have a conversation with them, it's it's as clear as day 
you know, right. what their decision making ability is. And nothing's wrong with, you know, regardless of where it's at. But knowing when to ask for for support is extremely mm-hmm. important, is extremely important. You know, people talk about quantum leaping and collapsing time around making money because it's a tangible. Nobody talks about quantum leaping and collapsing time around information. Mm-hmm. How do you quantum leap time? Around, how do you collapse time around information? You get people who know better, who know more than you know. This mm-hmm. is why we have we have mentors. This is why we have communities. This is why we have masterminds. And because mm-hmm. everyone wants to chase the dollar and it's fine, but the money is just a byproduct of our decision-making abilities. I mean, that's really what it is. That's so good. It. Exactly. The money is a byproduct of our decision-making abilities. It's true. So yeah. looking at the p and 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 really seeing where the money goes, the money does not lie. The money. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your story. So why did you, you know, for 17 years you were in corporate and then when did you make the the jump to come online and spread your skills and help people in this arena? Yeah, great question. So I worked with a mentor offline for many, many years. I was 24, no formal training or education, God-given gifts and abilities to understand people and money. And what is business only consists of two things. People complicate business so much. The reality is every single business in the world, I don't care where you're located, what you sell, only consists of two things, people and money. Period. And then the whole infrastructure is around that. So 24, no formal training or education, really, really extraordinary God gifts and abilities to understand people and money. And uh, bumped into my mentor by getting a job somewhere that he was reorganizing at that time as a company and uh, ended up working with him for 17 years, being like his right hand, being the CEO behind the CEO, working with all these companies, all of the stuff that I got to do, a lot of bankruptcies, chapter 11 cases. I mean, like, I just love that, that, that the hustle, the drive, the energy, like when you've got a company, five, $10 million in debt, and you get to make it to take it back to $10 million of profit and uh, of revenue annually. I mean, that's like a high for me. That That's exciting. We're not talking about a sale or two. Like we're talking about, this is a massive process. And um, in 2019, you know, I think I felt God shifting me. I felt like I outgrew that space. It was time to move on. And when mm-hmm. it's time to move on, you just move on. And we had um, some disagreements. And I think at that time, I just knew that um, I wanted to expand. I wanted something more. I wanted something different. I wanted something bigger. And in full transparency, my kids were getting older. You know, we were talking before I got on here. They're they're adults now. I wanted the time, space, and freedom to work from wherever I want. And when you're operating, um, you know, you are from seven to 12, 15 corporations at a time going through financial crisis, that's a lot of chaos at a time. And um, look, I did that for almost two, you know, two decades. And I just wanted mm-hmm. something different. That's amazing. So you just busted into this online space. It sounds like in 2019, you've been super successful. Tell us a little bit about some of your successes over the last, I guess, four years. You know, the incredible incredible thing is about really learning about myself. And I had to learn a lot. I didn't have to do sales, marketing, advertising before that. I didn't have to do any of that. I worked with a mentor. So the clients were given to me and then I would handle the infrastructure with him. But I didn't have to do so. I had to learn. Uh, this is a whole different animal for me. I'm used to being behind the scenes. Believe it or not, I'm an introvert. I'm an extremely private person. And here I am in the online space. Like, you just got to be there. I'm like, what do you mean? Right. Like, So I had to learn a lot of the stuff. You know, I think the greatest successes are is when people come to me for business. And not only do we grow their business, but we end up changing their life. Mm-hmm. You know, I just worked with a woman that uh, we worked together for a year. We started um, one income stream, dead, abusive relationship with a narcissist and alcoholic. Mm-hmm. 12 months into this, uh, I think she paid off like forty or $42,000 worth of debt, tens of thousands of savings in a bank, multiple income streams, and yes. we moved her out of the house. And her kids and her are safe into her own place while building the business and all that. So to me, that's way more, that's way more of a success than anything I can achieve for my business. That is what my business does to me. If I can help you build your business, but then you actually have an actual a life that you're proud of and excited to live, that to me is the ultimate success of what I've achieved. And there is a story upon story upon story. Mm-hmm. And you share in your, now that you're visible and you're marketing yourself, and this is how I found you, you shared how you also have walked away. You walked away from a, an abusive situation. Yeah. And so you are that beacon of light that since you can do it, other people can do it too. So 
percent yeah a hundred percent you know it's like anything else it's a it's a matter of choice it's a matter of decision and uh it's a matter of making a decision and then actually acting on it you know in life and in business it, people think it, those are two such separate things it's all the same we are the common thread between our life our friendships our love our relationships our business we are the common thread true wherever you go there you are there you There's... are you can't get away from you yeah, there you are. So people and money. So how, what are like three tips you could give to help our listeners really master people and money? The money is in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Everybody chases the sale. Everybody ch understand that in order for you to get paid, people want to want to pay you. Mm -hmm. And that comes from a relationship. People don't just pay because we showed up. People pay us because there's a relationship. People pay us because we're doing something. Yes. Because we have shown up. So the money is in the, the money is in the relationship. Number one. Number two, you have to have quality product. You absolutely have to have quality product. Uh, in the coaching space, I see it's, a lot of people are saying, I, I see this person, this coach selling this. How can I create the same product? Because if it's working for her, it's going to work for me. It's working for her. It's working for him because they're the fuel behind the product. They're the fuel behind the offer. It's not the offer. Right. That's the whole illusion with making money. It's not the offer. We're all ultimately selling the same thing, but people have a choice. Will they pay you or will they pay somebody else? Mm -hmm. So why would they pay you? So how the quality and the last thing, which I think, well, not the last, I mean, one of the, the last of the three that you've asked is, and this I think is the most painful process for people. And it's so simple, but it's the most complicated consistency, right? Consistency creates trust. And I always tell my clients, you're asking people to pay you. If you can't even show up every single day for your business, why would they trust to pay you to show mm -hmm. up for their business or to show up for their life? If you can't even do it for yourself, why could they trust? How could they possibly trust that you're going to do it for them? If we can't even do it for us. So consistency is, and I'm talking about consistency in showing up, consistency in building community. People are like, tell me one thing I need to be consistent on. It's all the things. It's the community right? building consistency. It's uh, serving on a daily basis consistency. It's selling on mm -hmm. a daily basis consistency. It, consistency. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I love those words, consistency and urgency. Yeah. Absolutely. A sense of urgency to, you know, and you've had a sense of urgency from 2019 to now early 2023 to build a multiple six figure business, or maybe it's even higher than that. You've had to apply consistency and urgency and show up and serve and community and relationship. Yes. Because I'm when you. Extremely consistent. I am brutally consistent, but mm -hmm. I have to say this. It starts with the. Uh, um, I'm extremely consistent in my life behind the scenes that with, with the things people don't see. It starts there. I'm not saying be consistent for the audience online. Be consistent for you. Like I am at the gym almost every single day. I do meditate every single day. I do things behind the scenes that seemingly are not for the business, but mm -hmm. make all the impact on the business. 100%. 100%. It goes back to your point of wherever you are, there you are. So how you are in your personal life is how you are in your professional life. So if you just busted onto this, uh, this online space, how did you build those relationships and build the community? What was the first step that you took? Because you didn't, this wasn't your world. You left corporate and now you're in this online space. Uh, number one, being extremely consistent. And because I'm being consistent and a lot of people are not, I naturally was here when everybody was plugging in, plugging out. And people started saying, wait a minute, she's here every day and this person is in and out. I trust her. I trust her more to actually give her my money because if I pay her now for a course that's not running for, for two months, I trust that she's not, she's going to be here two months from now. People, right. you have to understand when you're plugging, plug out. So like I sell, for example, courses, masterminds that don't, don't start for two, three, four months in advance. If I'm not here every single day and you've just given me $5,000 to start something in four months and I'm not here every single day, that would probably freak you out. It would freak me out. Like right. we're, we're transacting with big numbers here. So consistency. And then um, please repeat the question. I lost my train of thought. Just so a I little. said, how did you build your community and your relationships? Yeah. So consistency. 
And because I understand people, I understand human nature. One of my gifts, mm -hmm. people want to feel seen. People want to feel important. People don't want to feel like a sale. People want to know that I can, you can bring them value before you ask for anything in return. And mm -hmm. my community feels that for me. I give insane amount of values. People come into my master classes and they literally send me messages after saying, I don't understand why you didn't charge for this. That tells mm -hmm. me I'm giving them value. So I will always give before I ask. I will always give before I take. I understand the process. I understand how trust is built. But that is also why my client retention rate is astronomically high because I focus on the relationship. I know the money will come. People chase the money. I'm like, chase the relationship. Make mm -hmm. people feel safe. Make people feel seen. Make people feel important. If they don't mm -hmm. feel any of those things from you, they're not going to buy from you. I don't care if you give them the solution to, to the, the biggest problems in the world, but if are, there's no trust, they mm -hmm. won't even pay attention to what you're saying. Your stuff may be excellent, what you're teaching them, but the trust is what opens up their capacity to actually listen and take in what you're selling. So I build my community mm -hmm. by being here every single day, by providing extraordinary value, and by trusting that the right people will will pay and show up and, and actually invest at the right time, but it doesn't change my quality of service, whether I made a sale today or not. My quality of service doesn't change my quality of value, even in my free, based on how many people engaged or liked or showed up or whatever. That has nothing to do with the consistency, the quality and the value. And that has, mm. has been massive for my business. I love this. Mm -hmm. consistency quality and value and i love what you said they want basic human psychology they want to be safe they want to feel seen they want to feel important and they want to feel the trust and so for you when you are consistent i i know you from facebook world where else do you show up consistently on my stories and now i'm opening up a new instagram account it's going to be like more and more and more business focused uh that's going to be two three times a day uh, Facebook and Instagram, and Instagram stories. I don't believe in doing a lot. I believe in doing a few things extremely well and consistently. Consistently. Mm -hmm. So I'm not all over the place. I don't. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, See, it's I, simple. I, I I love things stupid simple. I simplify yes. everything. So there's no need to making money is very simple. People just complicate it because they think it's some oh. some some weird complex thing. Making right? money. Yep. It's about relationships. It's about, and so really honoring the people and giving them a breakthrough before they even pay. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So really good. And then you built relationships and I love this. So what is like one, one, one of your favorite nuggets that you like to teach people to help them have the value and the consistency and the quality and the sales? Work on yourself. And I know this isn't what people want to hear, but work on yourself because your money is, all, is only a reflection of what you believe is possible for you. That's mm -hmm. it. This is why you hear so many people saying, I've invested 10 years into learning the strategy or I've invested $50,000 and nothing is working. Well, nothing is working because unless you believe it's going to work, it's not going to work. So mm -hmm. while strategy is important, all of the strategies are excellent, but it's a matter of what do you believe? So I think the biggest wisdom I can give you is that you can only go as far as you believe you can achieve. And this is this is where a lot of people avoid investing. They just, I want to invest in the strategy and I want to invest in, it's all like they think it's the tangibles, the mechanical parts, which is important. Mm -hmm. And they really bypass the importance of investing in their personal development into their mindset. But the mindset is the fuel of the vehicle. You can have the most beautiful car in the world, the most expensive, but unless you put gas into it, nobody's going, you can sit in it and play right. tinker with the buttons, but unless you put gas in it, nobody's going anywhere. So it's the same thing. So you can have all the strategies in the world, all the investments, but you are still the fuel that makes the machine go. So the biggest mm. thing I can tell you, you're it. You're it. Right? It's very true. Invest in yourself to transform, believe in yourself. I I am I 100% agree with that. Mm. I mean, and it's fun. I think working on yourself is fun. And the fact that it's a tax write-off, Hello. So tax write off helps you become a better parent if you're a parent or spouse, partner and community member. So, yeah, I love it. Well, how can we stay in touch with you and, you know, follow you and see this consistency in action? Yeah. So Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, just my name. I, again, I keep things extremely simple. LinkedIn, I, I don't really use it, but it's there. Perfect. Well, thank you. 
I'm so grateful that you were here and you shared with us. Um, everybody comment, go ahead and follow Regina Gulbinas, G-U-L-B-I-N-A-S on Facebook and Instagram. Thank yeah. you. All Thank right. You. Well, keep showing up, being consistent and being yourself. And thanks so much for watching, everybody. Thanks, Regina, for being here. And I'll see you guys on the show next week. Bye.